And that, by the way, uh, comes as quite bad news to the Danes and to much of the rest of the international community. Uh, it, is pr it is going to take longer than that. Those of you who are, who are fans of arms control and the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, I think much the same is true with regard to the CTBT. That's not likely to get through in calendar 2009. We'll probably have to wait until 2010. But uh, there is good news in the bad news. And the good news is that the administration has what I think is a plausible uh, and, and, and prom even promising strategy for uh, winning over a, enough support for both of those pieces of legislation which are uh, related. And one thing that I think we will all notice as this year plays itself out is a departure from the way in which international diplomacy has been conducted in the past. The tendency has been for American special envoys, secretaries of state, so forth and so on, to travel abroad, to go into meetings with foreign leaders, negotiate an agreement, and then bring it back to the United States and try to get support for it. I think what we're going to be seeing, uh, particularly in the climate change area, but also in the trade area, is a parallel track of constituency building within the United States, even as the negotiations are going on abroad. Long and short, you may be right. You may have, you're, the pessimist you're talking to may be right. I, I don't think so, and I certainly hope not. Thank you. Yeah, just follow up, because I'd like to get some of the students' uh, opinions on this. You start off with Socrates and the concept of being the citizen of the world. Uh, in a way, this is a reality. Interesting points. All wars are civil wars, family feuds writ large. At the end, you talk about living up to an ideal. So is this a fact, or is it an ideal or a hope? And the question is this. Um, you know, many decades ago, uh, there was a, a person who said that the era of modern technology and globalization, we were living in a global, or would live in a global village. And along the lines of what you're saying, Strobe. Then others now argue, and I would posit this too, that no, it's the opposite. We, we live in a world of an infinite number of villages that are connected globally. So I'd like to get your opinion, but also ask some of the students, because I know the students here represent quite a makeup of, of, of different countries, um, backgrounds. Uh, is it a global village, or is it a lot of villages connected globally? Hmm? What are the feelings? Don't be shy. Just push the button. And identify yourself yes. just in terms of your field of study, where you're from, that kind of thing. Oh, um, my name is Jaya. I'm from Bard College, and I'm a human rights major. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I feel that um, our world is a bunch of villages connected globally. Um, just maybe when you factor in uh, cultural differences and things like that. But um, there's definitely so many things that connect us in other ways, that um, we're still a global community, just separated by small differences. Michael Bergevin from Bard College, uh, a global studies major. Let's say that the pessimistic view is the correct one, and the US government is not able to react to this sort of uh, this problem in any way. Do you see the motivation being able to come from any other country, or is it completely dependent on U.S. action? Maybe I could just take these last two, two comments two questions, right? and, and, and link them to your, your, your setup. You won't, it won't surprise you where I come out on the question of whether we're just a scattered bunch of, uh, of communities, uh, that is, national communities, as it were, national villages. Uh, what happens there matters here. What happens here matters there, no matter where here and there are. It's that simple. So we have an interest in what happens beyond our shores. People who live in other countries have a huge interest, as boy, we've all been reminded recently, what happens here in this country. Now, how that relates to governance is obviously tricky, because the nation state, unlike empire, is not obsolete. I suspect that the nation state is going to be a, the sort of basic building block of the international community for as long as the eye can see. But that still does not rule out the concept of global governance. A word that I did not introduce into this discussion is what I call the F word, which is federalism. Uh, 
And what I mean by that, and by the way, there are some parts of the right-wing blogosphere that consider it to be an F word because they associate it with united world federalism and world government and all that. But it's not a bad idea. It basically means that those functions which can most efficiently be carried out for the good of the people at a literally a neighborhood level, uh, whether it's collecting garbage or deciding on parking regulations or whatever, are properly left to the smallest, and lowest units. That's called devolution of authority. As much as possible is restricted to or limited to national governments. But there are some issues that simply cannot be dealt with by national governments alone and can only be dealt with cooperatively uh, through some kind of network of international structures. And that is not something that was thought of yesterday. There has, there has been global governance of various kinds, well, depending on how you define it, for millennia, for centuries, and certainly for many decades. And it's a matter of refining the way in which we apply that concept of federalism to global governance in order to keep us all as a, as a going enterprise. Now, with regard to the role of the United States, my uh, friend, colleague, and former boss, uh, Madeleine Albright, uh, created some controversy when she called the United States the indispensable nation. Uh, and uh, you, will, you will not hear probably that particular phrase uh, echoing now because it tends to put people's uh, teeth on edge in a lot of part of the world, part, parts of the world, particularly after the last eight years, I might add. But uh, while Barack Obama doesn't use that phrase, he essentially says the following. The United States cannot successfully advance its own interests, including the safety of its own people, all by itself. And the rest of the world cannot advance its interests, whatever country you're talking about, without the United States playing a constructive role. So it's a, it's a balancing act uh, without, uh, between, on the one hand, uh, excessive, arrogant exceptionalism of a kind that we have seen from time to time in our history, and at the other end of the spectrum, isolationism. It's what I would call self-interested American internationalism that has really quite a rich pedigree in our country. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh, sorry, at Kenyon College. Are you, um, a are you a Buckeye? No, I'm from okay, Massachusetts. Okay, I'm a Buckeye. So. Oh, well then I'm a Buckeye. But I'm a big fan of Ken I'm a big fan of Kenyon. <laughs> uh, me too. Well, I was wondering, kind of more on the philosophical note of the citizens of the world, I was wondering if you think there's a particular nation state or nation's people that Americans or maybe other groups that aren't as assigned on to this idea would learn, could learn from, or take some notes from, or if this is sort of um, more generally like a controversial um, idea or um, opinion that kind of everyone equally has to So it, it, It's from. a terrific question that I'm, I'm, I'm pausing on, because I, I, this is going to be true for whatever, however many minutes we have left. The questions are going to be better than the answers. I do think <clears throat> we Americans do have something to learn from of the Europeans. Uh, and what we have to learn from the Europeans is the way in which often painfully, sort of one step, two steps forward, one step backward, sometimes one step forward, two steps backward, they have been carrying out their own version of the great experiment within the confines of Europe. For hundreds and hundreds of years, Europe was the most violent place on the planet. And that was true up until about 1945. 